Hello. Let's take one more example in order to conclude this section of this uh, second chapter in which we're going to analyze the behavior of an object using a graphical approach and we're going to use the graph of the position function in order to describe the behavior of this object by describing its velocity and acceleration in terms of being positive or negative, accelerating or decelerating. So basically you have to break down this uh, graph into small intervals as it's already suggested to you by these points of interest. So we're going to take each individual uh, interval and characterize what happens to the velocity and the acceleration. And we're going to do that by analyzing the slope of the tangent to this graph, as we know that represents nothing else than the velocity, and the way this slope is actually increasing or decreasing in order to determine the sign for the acceleration. Let's not waste any more time. Since we have to analyze all these um, separate intervals, let's create a table. The first column, I'm going to use it for the intervals. So I'm going to take 0 to A, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E to F. The second column, I'm going to use it for the velocity and the next for the acceleration. Now, let's take the first interval from 0 to A. If we sketch the tangent to the graph and analyze the slope, we see that at 0, we had a slope of 0, and it's increasing all the way to A, where basically it's the maximum slope, on this interval at least, so the velocity is positive, and because it was 0 and continued to increase, the acceleration is increasing, so it's positive as well. So on this interval 0 to A, both velocity and acceleration are positive. On the next interval from A to B, the slope of the tangent, as we see, it's also positive, but from uh, a very steep slope at the beginning of the interval, the slope continues to decrease all the way to zero. When we reach the point B, the slope is basically zero. So the slope of the tangent is going to be positive on this interval as well. However, the acceleration is decreasing because it starts at a very steep angle and goes to zero, so it's decreasing. So our object is decelerating. From B to C, so from 0, it's becoming negative. On this entire interval from B to C, the velocity or the slope of the tangent is negative. That is clear. And uh, the acceleration from 0 is becoming steeper and steeper, so it's basically decreasing. Both velocity and acceleration are going to be negative. On the next interval, from C to D, the velocity is maintained negative although it's becoming zero at that uh, point D. And in order to become zero, the acceleration has to increase. That's why the acceleration on this interval is going to be positive. Now between D and E, we have a particular situation because at both points D and E, the slope of the tangent is zero. For the entire interval, the slope is maintained to zero, so that's why we're going to put zero for both velocity and acceleration because it doesn't change for the entire interval. So now on the last interval, the slope starts to be negative again. So velocity is negative and it's decreasing. The closer it goes to F, it's becoming steeper and steeper. So it's decreasing. That translates to a negative sign for the acceleration once again. And this is how you analyze the behavior of an object on the graph of the position function. So I hope you find this type of example useful because uh, you're going to encounter questions either exactly like uh, this one or maybe uh, what's given to you is the graph for the velocity but the approach is basically uh, very similar to this so I thought you might find this uh, useful. As long as you know how to interpret the connection between the behavior of uh, an object and um, the signs for the velocity and acceleration and implicitly the product between the two, then you should be fine. With this, I'm going to conclude this section about displacement, velocity and acceleration and the second derivatives. So thanks for watching.